Hello everyone, and welcome to a quick overview of the Meraki MX. The Meraki MX is a next generation firewall that will fit in many categories. It can serve as an enterprise grade firewall, a component within the software defined network, as well as being easily deployed and configured for distributed deployments. Speaking of being easily deployed, we can actually set up VPNs in a few moments with our integrated management console. Meraki offers the ability to configure and deploy your firewall in minutes, even from a remote location, thanks to the cloud management console. The true power of the Meraki dashboard, though, is the all-in-one web-based control panel. From this one dashboard, you can view, manage, and configure a full Meraki deployment, not just the firewalls. You'll actually be able to see your switches, your wireless access points, as well as your cameras. The Meraki MX security features include automated updates from Talos, leading intrusion prevention system known as SNORP, full layer 7 protection, as well as file detection, file scanning, and file virtualization in case of there's a day zero attack coming out. Upon first logging into the Meraki dashboard though, you'll be greeted, greeted with a network overview page. You can see the location of all of your networks and their initial health and if there's any alerts that are popping up or need your attention. I'm going to be loading into my San Francisco network here, and upon loading into my San Francisco network, I'll be greeted with a clients page. This is everybody that's connected to this one specific network, what kind of devices there are, users that are authenticated, and we can get a lot of information from this client pages as well, if there's any alerts or if there's anything, any warnings coming up or anything that we have to take care of. This is our typical coffee and donuts page though, so this is where you'll be getting the gist of your information what happens on the day-to-day -day basis. So as I said, we can see all of the clients that are configured, they're authorized, the devices that are going through and their MAC addresses as well. But we can also see other information, such as what kind of applications are being used in my network, what ports are open, what's available, what HTTP content is being used, as well as custom pie charts. If there's anything that you would specifically like to build, you can. What I like to focus on though is applications. So we can see what kind of applications are being used in our network and if there's anything that's throttling my network or if somebody's using too much bandwidth, we can actually figure that out very easily. So we can see we have two miscellaneous application details here. So this may be custom built applications for a specific network to run, but we can also see as a close third is YouTube. So YouTube is creating and using a lot of bandwidth within my network. So if I wanted to, I would create a Meraki MX firewall rule that would limit the connections being built to YouTube. We can also get more specific information by simply clicking one of the users and seeing what's happening on their day-to-day -day basis. <clears throat> so we can see what kind of connection uh, our Henry Ford is getting here, what access point they're connecting to, and if they had to fail over and connect to another access point. All of this blends into the software-defined networking that the Meraki MX feeds the information to. We can also see what kind of connections that Henry Ford is building out to as well. Maybe he's using a lot of YouTube. But what I want to focus on today is the security and SD-WAN portion side of things. So on the sidebar here, you'll see where we can see all of our devices. But what I do want to focus on is seeing the security and SD-WAN side of things. So as I mentioned before, we can actually create and build site-to-site -site VPNs in a matter of moments. So as we go to site-to-site -site VPNs, you'll notice that there's a few simple configurations that we have to decide. First of all, do we want it on? So it's either off or on. We can decide if we want a hub or a spoke. Most of the time we're going to go with a mesh, so I'll go with that. And then we're going to decide what networks we want to actually cross this site-to-site -site VPN. And thanks to our integrated management platform, all of this is built into our management console. So we just simply decide what of our internal networks we want to cross that VPN, and then how the NAT is gonna happen. Do we want it to be automatic, or do we wanna have some kind of port forwarding? And then at the bottom side of the page here, we'll see that we have all of the remote VPN participants. And after that, you have successfully deployed your site-to-site -site VPN. As I mentioned, just a matter of moments. We also have the ability to do client-side VPNs. So if you had outside connections being built in, you absolutely can set that up in the same way as the site-to-site -site VPN. Of course, with our firewall, we are a state from firewall, but we do have other layer seven portions of the firewall as well. 
as any stateful firewall, we're going to be blocking implicitly any outside traffic trying to come in. So that is inherently always there. For our outbound rules, though, we can, of course, create deny or allow rules, and we can choose the protocol, the source, source port, destination, and so on. That is a standard layer three firewall. You can have all of that customization and you can decide what kind of logging that you wanna see with that as well. The real power of a next generation firewall though is our layer seven rules. If we want to block specific geolocations, as you can see here outlined in my first rule here. So we wanna deny any traffic that's gonna be going to or from Iran, North Korea, or Russia. Sometimes there are just geolocations that are up to cause no good, or they're just trying to simply cause chaos, or perhaps they're just trying to gather some information. Sometimes we just have to have a geolocation rule on. Also included within our layer seven rules though, we can block specific peer-to-peer -peer applications, or we can set up any kind of social media block, sports block, gambling block, anything of that specific nature, We'll start to decide if that's an application that we want to block it, if it's a URL with a specific categorization. We will automatically start to block that kind of information. <clears throat> of course, within our firewalling aspects as well, if you did want some outside traffic coming in, we could create one-to-one -one NAT. We could also set up port forwarding or one-to-many NAT for your outbound internet connections. And of course, as I did mention, this is a true and breed next generation firewall. So what next generation firewall wouldn't be complete without an intrusion prevention system? And as I did mention, we are supported by Talos, Cisco's and the world's largest threat facility research and investigation. So Snort is updated by Talos at a hourly base. And every single time we decide that there's a new day zero attack out there, we're gonna push out those new updates, Meraki included. Our motto is see everywhere, block anywhere. With your intrusion detection systems, we of course have three different modes. One just being disabled, detection, which is going to simply tell you if there was an event and not act on it. And then prevention, which is actually going to be actively looking for those day zero attacks, these new threats out there and what's going on and block them. We do have a few different modes of rule sets as well. So connectivity, balanced, and security. Connectivity is going to primarily focus on, I want my firewall to continue connectivity between these connections. It's going to have the least amount of rules, but it's also going to have the least amount of security. And then of course, there's security, which is going to be heavy handed with its rule sets. It's going to block a lot more suspicious connections and it's going to be far more on the lookout. So you may see a lot more block attempts. You may see a lot more blocks coming through or blocks being shown up. It may impede some of your traffic. And then of course, in the middle, we have the balanced, which is going to be a little bit of both. It's gonna focus on security. It's gonna fo focus on that connectivity as well. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, we do have file scanning and analysis. So with threat grid, which is our virtualization method, so whenever a, a new file comes across your network, something that you haven't seen, and we don't have a disposition to tell you whether it's good or bad, we will send it to threat grid, <clears throat> where we will actually virtualize that file, detonate it, and see what's going on with that specific file. What is happening with it? Is it attempting to do something malicious, such as privilege escalation, data reconnaissance, or perhaps is it trying to do data exfiltration? We'll help you decide that, we'll give you the report, and we'll give you the threat score, and if it's bad enough, we'll outright start to block everything for you. And then of course, our file scanning is actually generated by Cisco's advanced malware protection. <clears throat> so whenever files do come through, we will scan them, determine what that SHA-256 is, determine if it's good or bad, and then of course, as I mentioned before, with ThreatGrid, if we don't know what the file is, we will virtualize that, that file for you and then give you that disposition. And then of course, in today's world, there are new day zero attacks out there all the time. There may be false positives. There is no such thing as a silver bullet that's gonna block everything that's bad and allow everything that's good. Sometimes there are processes or applications that do 
or have the ability to do bad things, but are primarily used in a good way. We understand that sometimes false positives may happen, so you absolutely have the ability to whitelist your URLs or your files. And then we can get a report on the back end through Talos, or we can see what's going on with ThreatGrid and perhaps override that disposition. <clears throat> and the last thing that I want to share with you today is actually our security center. Our security center you can think of as the coffee and donuts page or the overview page for all security related incidents. See, we'll, we will get an overview or trend analysis of what's going on within our network. How many threats am I stopping at any given day? What are my most affected clients? What are the most pre prevalent threats that are happening with my, my network? As well as what are the operating systems that are being taken advantage of within my network? I'm very big on doing trend analysis and Meraki is as well as you can see here. So as you can notice, if you have a most affected operating system, we should probably look into some things like my intrusion prevention system to create new rules for this operating system. Or perhaps we know that there's a new security patch out there that we should patch these operating systems. All of this information here is to help you harden your entire network, but also to help you harden your Meraki appliances and protect your users as well. You can also see a top source of threats for your network as well, as I mentioned, specific geolocations. So if you see a lot of intrusion events coming from a specific geolocation, you could just simply create a new geolocation layer 7 rule for yourself and protect yourself from that specific geolocation. But what we can do here is filter in on, let's say, Friday 8-1 here. We can see all 10 threats that came in on any specific day. And what we've done is we've created a filter. So now we know the clients that were affected on the specific day, what file it was or the threat that happened that came through, as well as the operating system for that one given day as well. I also want to see the events, though, that are happening on that specific day. <clears throat> so now we've created a filter. We can see what specific events happened on that specific day. We can see the source destination. So we can see who in our network was trying to, to download this. And we can also see where it was downloading from. But the best news of all that you can get from this is you can actually see that it was blocked. And you can see why the disposition was actually marked as malicious. So our file scanning technology and for endpoints actually caught this file before the connection was ever made to be downloaded. And we stopped a potential impact from happening. You can also change your filters from the filter portion right here. So if you just wanted to see malware detection, intrusion detection, or if you just wanted to see what the disposition or the specific files are within your network. You can also change the timeline as well. If you wanted to go back up to two weeks, if you wanted to change to go back to just two hours, I'm still setting to a specific day that we have here though. And then of course, with all of the reports, you can actually just download these reports and review them for yourselves. And that concludes my Meraki MX overview. If you have any further questions, please reach out. Uh, I love to answer any questions that you have. Thank you and have a wonderful rest of your day.